Today you see here a technology demo from Atmel of a center stack application, how a car in the future may look like. This comprises of a touch screen and a proximity detection um, feature in it. So assuming you drive in the car, it's night, the center stack is blanked out. Um, all of a sudden you feel not comfortable, you like to change the setting of your climate control. You approach the center stack, it detects your approaching hand, it lights off the screen. You then can change the settings, for example, of the um, climate control. The uh, other feature, you can then say, okay, let's check where I am on the road. You go into the navigation systems. We have a multi-touch touchscreen capability. And this is a technology supporting unlimited touches, actually. In uh, this case, we uh, implemented two, two finger touches. You have a one finger, basically, you slip the slide, the, um, the card, the map, or then you can pull in or pull out, scroll in, scroll out with, with your fingers to narrow down. So this is our second generation touchscreen technology, it's Max Touch, uh, which we will bring to the automotive market next year. And a big advantage of it, for example, is even when it's cold, if you have gloves on, uh, multi-touch, touch or recognition is done with gloves and uh, you don't need to recalibrate, you can actually do this with one finger glove, one finger non glove. That's our technology, proximity detection and uh, multi-chip, uh, multi-touch uh, touchscreens. Okay. But this is sort of like a, uh, it's for navigation or what would you use it for? Uh, it's in your center stack. And what this basically entails is you have your navigation system in here, you have your radio, radio control in there, you have uh, your air conditioning control in here, you're not allowed to watch TV while driving, but when you are on the parking lot, you can also watch TV in it. And everything is controlled via this touch screen. And it blackens out after a while. When it's dark, when you like to sleep or drive uh, and not uh, seeing any light shining in your face, and comes back on if you approach the uh, center stick. So this could be used for any type of vehicle or specific ones only? use any type of vehicle. What we see today is that the high-end class, the high-end cars adopting this technology first, but as we all know, it goes down next uh, few years to medium in, in, in the yeah. low-end arena as well. What would be the cost for something like this? The cost for something like this differs really from the size of the screen. This is a new technology. Currently, we have resistive touchscreens. This is a capacitive touchscreen, and depending on, um, on the size of the screen, uh, it really defers what the cost is. It, it starts probably in the tw uh, low 20s and goes all the way to more than $200, depending on the screen. We have small sizes like in phones, 3-inch screens, and we have huge, this is a 10-inch screen, but we also have seen 12-inch screens in the future in cars, so that pretty much determines the price. It's very basically driven not so much by the electronics, more by the screen size. It would be a factory installed or something they would do afterwards? This is typically factory installed. Any other comments about this here? No, it's just uh, that this technology was what's really originated in consumer applications like the Apple, iPhone or now the touch, touchpad, the iPad, is driving into other, other segments, into industrial segments, but also into automotive segments. And there's an auto connectivity aspect, connecting your iPad, your iPhone to, to the big screen in the car and like to enjoy the same user interface, for example. Uh, you just saw the, um, the demo on the center stack. The same technology is applied here on a demo board. It's a smaller inch, a smaller screen, it's 4.3 inch, so it's more towards um, consumer kind of application. But also in cars, you may have a small screen. The screen is not directly behind the touch uh, sensor like it is on the, on the other um, application. We have the screen here basically running on a PC and here you can see um, if you have to slide show these pictures you can now imagine you have maybe maps of certain certain um, cities you like to go in and then you can also zoom in zoom out into those maps you can rotate them uh, point them to north or south wherever you like to that would be a typical application in the car and here you also have multiple touch incorporate on the other device on the other demo we showed dual touch with the dual touch implementation but this technology actually implements unlimited touch and not not feasible so much for automotive more for gaming but uh, a three finger touch i think that can also be find its way into automotive applications
Hello, I'm Toby Prescott and I work for Atmel and I'm going to explain the car access and security systems. Okay, go ahead. So what we have is several different flavors of systems and I'll go through those and explain what each one does. <clears throat> what we've implemented is the main body control module. This is the, the microcontroller that controls all the car access systems and we've built these systems around it to do these different type of subsystems. The first one is the typical car access system that you're very used to. This is where you have a key fob in your pocket and you pull it out and you press a button to open and close your doors to lock and unlock the vehicle. This one we've implemented as a two-way system so it sends a message to the vehicle and then receives an acknowledgement back. So when you press the button you see you see the uh, signal up here on the screen actually receiving the message and then the acknowledgement comes back to the key fob from the vehicle. The next part of the access and security system is what's called the vehicle immobilizer and this is what protects the starting of the vehicle and what we have here is the passive entry so this runs without a battery this means even if your battery in your key fob dies you can still start the vehicle this is a very key point. So this is running without a, ve uh, without a battery and over here implemented where you have a capacitive button that allows you to actually try and start the car with a push button and you notice that the screen still hasn't started the vehicle. When you place the key fob in the system, when you place the key fob in the system you can see that it's actually powering the, the key fob with the field fr strength from the vehicle and doing an authentication sequence. So the next system is what's called a passive entry system and this is the, the high-end system where you keep your key fob in your pocket and you don't have to pull it out and press a button to open and close the doors. You simply just walk up, open the door, get in and start the vehicle and there's still a high level of security and protection all done electronically without your interaction. So it's a much seamless much more seamless interaction with the vehicle. The way this system works, inside the vehicle there is an antenna that sends out a signal to the key fob in your pocket and when this is received it sends back a message saying unlock the door or lock the door or start the vehicle or that, that type of thing. One key thing in this is that there's actually a three-dimensional antenna in here and this is very important because when you put this in your pocket you don't want to have to pay special attention to how you put it in your pocket or the way you're standing. So you can hold this in any axis and still receive the antenna. So if you notice here on the screen we're actually displaying the signal that's received from each different axis. So as you move this you'll see that each axis is very clearly defined. Okay, this is actually showing the passive entry system as it would look on a vehicle. You would have the key fob in your pocket and as you approach the vehicle, as you touch the door handle, there's a capacitive touch sensor in the door handle that detects when you've touched the door handle. And as you can see right now, the door is locked. That authentication process, the communication electronically happens as soon as you touch this door handle and before you can actually pull the door to open the door, the authentication has happened and the door is unlocked. So this is the passive entry system in action. So we talked about the car access features here. Now will this be pre-installed or would somebody put it in the aftermarket? So typically this is going to be installed from the, the original manufacturer. Um, via the tier ones they would implement the system. Um, it's already implemented in a lot of high-end cars but they're starting to move this into the mainstream adaptation in the vehicles. So we talked about the uh, how you could open the car from you know in a restaurant or some other place. What would be the cost of this? I'm not sure on the cost. I can't really go into cost details. Cost? It depends on the implementation.